What's up everyone, I'm OBG for tastingskills.com. So today I'm gonna show you how to set up a professional whiskey tasting, but at the same time, this system can work with beer or wine. So you just need to switch it out. Now, we're gonna cover how to buy whiskeys, organize whiskeys, send all the information to everybody, what you need, how to set it all up, how to taste, how to actually take notes and some advice. Plus I'm gonna have links to everything that we're gonna cover. So let's get into it. Tip number one, tasting formats. First thing, let's pick some whiskeys. But before that, let's understand the differences between the tasting formats. And there's basically two of them. We have vertical on one side and we have the horizontal on the other. The horizontal is where we study a country, region, style, or producer in a horizontal way. And the vertical is where we taste multiple vintages or years of a specific producer. But let's focus on the horizontal tasting. Since the best format to study or taste whiskey, beer, or wine is in a horizontal way. That way we can pick multiple producers from a country and taste in a horizontal way or be more specific and say, we're gonna do a specific region within that country. We're gonna taste multiple producers. Like that, we get a horizontal understanding of that region. But the combinations are endless, and here's a few examples. You could do country versus country, vintage versus vintage, bottle strength versus bottle strength, bottled and bond versus bottled and bond. What's the best price point in a specific category? And you get the idea. Since the combinations are absolutely endless when it comes to tasting whiskey, beer, or wine. But what whiskeys should you actually buy for your tasting? Well, before we get into actually getting some whiskey, let's figure out who's actually coming to your tasting. Tip number two, the crowd. Now, this category is broken up in three groups. The first group is the beginner. They've never attended a tasting, they've had whiskey once or twice, and they're interested in learning more. For this tasting, you're only going to need three whiskeys. That's it. Make it short and clean. They've never sat down, they don't know how an aroma wheel works, they don't know how to taste, they know nothing at this point. So. Keep it short since you're gonna be spending a lot of time explaining how it works to start out with. And at the same time, you wanna have a good experience. The second group is the enthusiastic taster. He's got a small selection of whiskeys at his house. He tastes regularly. He has a few books. He's read up on the subject. For this tasting, you're gonna need six whiskeys broken up in two flights. Now you could do region versus region, vintage versus vintage. There's plenty of combinations. Just make sure that you put three whiskeys and then you take a five to 10 minute break and then you do the other three. And then finally, we have the annoying nerd that can't shut up and regularly invests his 401k into whiskey. For this tasting, you're gonna need nine whiskeys in three flights. Now, what I would do is do three flights of three types of whiskeys. For that, you could do country versus country. At the same time, you can add some vintages or what you could do is say, we're gonna taste all 12 year olds to start out with, second flight 15 year old and then 18 year old. There is plenty of combinations out there. And remember, if you're missing a bottle, it's not a big deal. You can always say that you're throwing them a curve and they're probably gonna think like, oh, I figured that out. But no one cares. Okay, if you're unsure of who's actually coming to your tasting, well, you should survey those people. Now, the best way is to send an email with a few questions. Now, I've put a link below to tastingskills.com. There you have a survey. You can just copy and paste it into the email, send it, and it's a basic score system like that. You can easily say, this is a beginner, this is enthusiastic, and this is a nerd. All right, now let's move on to tip number three, the flight. The flight or the lineup as it's referred is the way you're gonna organize the whiskeys from spot one through six. Now, it's important to take in account the lighter whiskeys at the starts and go for the bigger, more pungent whiskeys. And this follows two simple rules. On the first axis, you get from light, subtle, delicate, to very pungent on the other end. On the other axis, you get very low proof, and lots of sweetness to very high proof and very dry. 
Now, if you follow those basic rules, it will be easy for you to taste them side by side. So you can just organize them in that specific way. But if you're doing a specific producer or whatever other thing you're doing, just always keep in mind, you're trying to go from the lightest to the most pungent. And on the other spectrum, from the youngest to the oldest. Those are the two simple rules that you just need to follow when you're organizing a flight. Tip number four, what you need. So here's a quick list of everything that I need, so pay attention. A properly lit environment, a table with at least 36 inches of space, white tablecloth, tech sheet or an aroma wheel, spit cup, napkin, water dropper, jigger, glass lid, stemware, water, something to take notes like a PC, a phone, but if you wanna be traditional and just do pen and paper, you are welcome to. Now, let's talk about each items that I've just covered in details, where they're located and why do they actually exist. The first one is the easy one, of course, and that would be daylight. And yes, of course, I'm using fancy lights to be at 6600 Kelvin so that the light is neutral, but anything will do as long as you're not in the dark. The table with a space of 36 to 48 inches if you want to be comfortable when tasting and taking notes, but if you are side by side and have a PC, then it's more like 60 inches. White tablecloth so that you have a white background to visualize the whiskey, beer, or wine, but if you don't have one, just use a white sheet of paper. A tech sheet like I'm using. Now this is where all the action is going to be happening since you can look up things very easily as you smell and taste and try to understand what is actually in the glass. Now this is one of the most overlooked steps when it comes to tasting and I can tell you from experience I've been to a lot of tastings in my life and when somebody doesn't know what they're doing you don't have water, you don't have a spit cup, you don't have a tech sheet, it's just shit. And that turns out to be a shit experience and that affects what you're actually tasting. So pay attention to details here because this is one of the most important steps, having a proper technical sheet like I'm using. Spick up a napkin. Now I use a red solo cup so that it stands out and I just put a folded napkin in it so when I spit, it's more discreet. Water dropper and jigger. The jigger is to pour the correct amount of an ounce and a half and that will give you 17 samples per bottle so keep that in mind when you're shopping for whiskey. The eyedropper is to add three drops of water to the whiskey so that it opens it up. Glass lids. Now this is to seal all of the precious aromas and I'm using 70 millimeters. But if you don't have that, you can use a basic coaster. Glassware. Now, I prefer stem glasses. It makes it easier to swirl and to visualize the whiskey, beer, or wine, but any glass will do. Water. Do I really need to explain to you water? We're here to taste. And finally, we're gonna cover how to take notes, but that brings us to a bigger subject. How do we actually organize everything? Well, that brings us to tip number five, how to set up. At the center of my setup, I have my Tech Sheet 1.0, so that when I'm tasting, I could look up all the types of aromas or flavor profile that I can think of. To the left of that, I have my spit cup with the folded napkin. And then I have my flight of art bag one through five. To the right of that, I have my water glass and my PC. Now there is a madness to the setup. Let me explain. As we sit in front of it, you can see that this makes a narc from left to right. To my left, I have my spit cup. To my left, I have my first sample, meaning I can grab the sample, remove the lid, look at the color, smell it, taste it, and spit. But if you are a lefty, well, just switch it around. Tip number six, tasting info and format. So it's important to get the information to everybody before the tasting if you're gonna actually take digital notes. So I'm gonna show you my templates. Now I have put six different tastings and the links are below, but if you go on my website, there is more links to other tasting formats in the nerdy category. But all that said, how does that actually work? Well, let me show you my actual email that I sent to everybody. At the top, we have art bag vertical with the date. Below that, we have the link to all of the actual whiskeys directly to the website so that you can get all the information by clicking the link. Below that, we have the rules and I'll get back to that. Below that, we have each individual whiskey that we will be tasting with color, nose, mouthfeel, and thoughts. 
And below that, I have the second whiskey. Now, this is a good time to go back to the rules. First rule is everybody needs this bit. This isn't a hammering fest. We're not here to get drunk. We are here to taste. We are here to be focused. Now, in that focus, we're taking notes, we're tasting, we're trying to figure out what is in the glass. We need to spit. We need to stay focused. Second rule, keep your mouth shut. Don't talk about what you're tasting, what you're smelling, what you think. All of those things are personal things. And what you're tasting, what you're smelling, well, that's not the same thing that I'm tasting since we don't have the same olfactive memory. So just keep that in mind. And at the end, if you really wanna share and everybody's done tasting, then you can always reply to that email and send it to whoever you want. Tip number seven, pouring the whiskeys. Now, it's important that if you're doing your own tasting, follow these simple rules. First, you're gonna line up your whiskeys, you're gonna taste them, you're gonna organize them in the proper way that they should be organized in a flight. Then you're gonna take a picture of each bottle at the front and at the back. You're gonna take all that information, you're gonna email it to yourself so that you can organize it and send out the email to everybody, just like I did with my template. All right, now with that out of the way, let's pour the whiskeys. Now you're gonna put an ounce and a half in each of the glasses, organize them in their proper location that they were organized in the flight. You're gonna put the lid on each of them. After that, you're gonna grab your water dropper, remove the lid, put three drops in it, and swirl the whiskey. Cover the lid, put it back in place. Repeat for every other whiskey. Tip number eight, how to taste. We have our lineup, the whiskeys are poured, the water drops are on there, we have the lids, we have our tech sheet, we have our PC, we have our water, we have our spit cup, we are ready to taste. But how do we actually taste? Well, let me show you. First step, remove the lid. Swirl the whiskey to get the aromas out. Number two, bring it to the edge of the table and look at the color. Number three, bring up to your nose with your eyes closed so that you can be focused. Number four, take a little sip and swirl around your mouth. Then open a small cavity and bring in some air so you can push all the aromas to the olfactory bulb. Number five, spit. Now this process is something that you need to be comfortable with. I know, we're bringing in air, we're spitting. My recommendation is that you get a glass of water and you practice. Like that, when you actually pull air for the first time, you don't actually bring in all the water with you and then cough and spit because I've seen that a lot and it's normal. You just need to practice and after time, you will have those steps down. Now, let's cover them one more time. Step one, swirl the whiskey. Now you could go clockwise, counterclockwise. That's not very important. Number two, look at the color. Number three, bring it to your nose with your eyes closed. The reason for that is that you turn off one of your senses and you can really be focused in the moment on the nose of the whiskey. Number four, take a little sip, bring in some air, swirl it around. Number five, spit. Now let's do it together. Grab the glass, remove the lid, swirl, tilt, look at the color, bring to your nose, eyes closed, take a little sip, bring in some air, grab the cup, spit. Those are the fundamentals of tasting. Now, if you follow these basic rules, you're gonna be a lot more efficient than other tasters. Because visualizing and understanding what's in the glass and just doing the proper steps over and over and over again, eventually you're gonna see the real difference between each sample that you're trying. All right, now this time we're gonna do it again, but I'm gonna show you how to take notes Step number one, remove the lid, swirl the glass. Step number two, look at the color. Put the glass down, write the color down. Step number three, swirl it again, bring it to your nose, close your eyes. Take your time here since 80% of what we taste is with the olfactory bulb, AKA the nose. Now, take some notes, bring them back to your nose, get more aromas out, write some more. All right, now, swirl again, bring it to your mouth and take a small sip wash it around in your mouth and bring in a little air, five, spit. Now, it's important that you take your time between each step as you're taking notes. What I usually do is I will do a full tasting out of the gate where I grab, look, smell, taste, spit. Think about it for a few seconds. Do it again. Pick up, remove, look, smell, taste. And each of those steps, I stop and I actually take notes. 
it's important to put your thoughts in there. That is one of the biggest things that I see when it comes to people tasting. They don't know how to take notes. They don't take notes. And the only way you're gonna get better at this is if you actually take notes. So just stay focused on those steps. Now we're gonna do it one more time. All right, grab, remove the lid, look at the color, bring it to your nose, take a little sip, spit, and review. Now, reviewing your notes is very important. You need to go from top to bottom, making sure that what is in the glass is actually what you think. Now, once you've done all of that, we're gonna do one final tasting, and this one is really to put down your thoughts and put down any emotions, how you feel about this whiskey. And this is important because what you think is very personal. And don't worry about what other people are saying. It's not really important. Tip number nine, studying. Now studying is one of the most important part if you wanna get good at this, meaning whiskey, beer, or wine, or any other subject. The more information you consume, the more you read, especially like atlases so that you understand the region, who is actually making that specific product, how are they making it, that will make you a much better taster. That is just the reality. There's no getting away from studying. And I can tell you, I've seen a lot of really good tasters, but the problem is that they don't have a broad knowledge or understanding of the whiskey industry, wine industry, or beer industry to really have an understanding of what they're tasting, the value, and what this product represents. So just keep that in mind. Tip number 10, advice. Now, tasting is a personal journey. Don't ever forget that. What you like may not be somebody's cup of tea. That is just the reality. I'm into peated, sherry cast finish, Madeira, very old whiskeys, but I've been tasting whiskeys for a very long time and it takes time to build up to that. Now, you need to seek out basic whiskeys here or wines or beer to understand the landscape in the 20, 30, $40 price range before you start launching yourself into $500 whiskeys or rare bourbons or whatever the hype is. Forget all of that. This is your personal journey through whatever category of spirits, beer or wine that you are doing. So just stay focused on that. Now, I have put a link to everything that I've covered, of course. And if you do wanna get the fundamentals of tasting, I also have that at Tasting Skills. There you'll get a free 17 page guide to everything on how to taste. All right, that's gonna do it for me. I'm OBG for tastingskills.com. Please remember to subscribe, leave comments below. You can always share and I will catch you in the next one. I hope that you've learned something and if you have any major questions, well, just leave them below since I'll be in the comments living down there for a while. All right, my friend, please remember, stay sober, peace.